So you're working on a series of essays with the New York Times about 1919. So why 1919? Why is this year so important for, for America and for the modern world? 1919 is not a year that jumps out at most people. We don't really focus on it in, in school. It's not one of those big years like 1776. But if you look closely, a lot is happening. You've got a country in turmoil in a lot of ways and in a, in a world that is struggling to reconstitute itself after the, the epic First World War that has shaken every country on earth and um, killed millions of young men. And so it's fascinating to look closely at the United States and the world in, in a year when things are changing very quickly. You've got a huge peace treaty that's being negotiated and um, you know thousands of moving parts inside that treaty. The world is struggling to figure out how democratic it will be. There are people who really want democracy and human rights, and they, they hear Woodrow Wilson's speeches, and they, they realize that's what they want. They have a vision of the future, and all around the world there are young activists, nationalists, people like Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam, leaders of Central American countries, leaders of stateless populations in Europe and Asia who think this is the moment to have a, a new country. But as the negotiations happen in Paris, a lot of those hopes get extinguished because they don't quite fit in. They're inconvenient for the European powers who are also really interested in what the world will look like. There's just a lot of new technology coming. The automobile is, is racing into American people's lives. Um, as a result, there are new forms of energy consumption. Um, the radio has advanced a lot during the fighting of the war, and it will become a, you know, a wildly popular commercial product um, beginning in the, uh, 1920, but it's, it's beginning to be available at the end of 1919. Hollywood is getting going. You know, when cinema first becomes available, it's made in big cities all around the country, including New York. But in the years right after the war is uh, over, Hollywood gets bigger because people like the sunshine and studios are growing and stars begin to live there, so they're, they're more easily filmed. So all year long, it's just a, a fascinating um, collision between hopes and reality, and sometimes hope wins out and sometimes it, it doesn't. So throughout the year, we're going to have um, really smart writers weighing in on individual themes. Um, I, I kicked the series off with a long essay on January 1st, about the whole year, 1919, and throughout the rest of the year, we'll have more focused essays. We're, we're doing a podcast to accompany uh, these essays. Um, it's called The Crack Up. Um, your essay was... Was, was it called the year of the crack up? It, it was. I, I found that phrase, the crack up, it's the title of an essay by F. Scott Fitzgerald. He's one of many young people whose lives are transformed in the year 1919. He becomes a published writer for the first time. He gets a book contract. And he, in his essay, The Crack Up, he talks about the ability of um, what he calls a first class mind to basically hold two contradictory thoughts at the same time and function. And I thought that was a lot like the country. America is racing forward. It's a very modern country. It's done extremely well in the, in the war effort, better than the European countries, which have suffered devastation. American young men are, are killed, there's no doubt about that, but a, a smaller number than any European combatant. And uh, American economic might and military might are, are really on display for the first time. So the U U.S. is very strong and cities are thriving. And a lot of innovation, new companies are doing very well, a lot of money in America. But there's also this other America that I, I wanted to pay some attention to because I think we, we're seeing right now in 2019 uh, and over the last few years that we're we are a very divided country. Um, we usually say red, red state America and blue state America. And that is certainly true in 1919, although 
I don't think we can say red and blue states because it's almost the opposite. Um, it's not exactly the same politically, but the Democratic Party is very strong in the South. Republicans are strong in the Northeast, um, so that's different. But you have the same division between urban America, people who are on the cutting edge of information and <laughs> new kinds of um, tech, t new kinds of um, jobs, and they're making more money, um, and they're living pretty fast kinds of lives. And then you have a slower, more rural America that's also very powerful. It's um, very powerful politically. It controls Congress. It's quite powerful culturally. Um, they get prohibition through, so um, suddenly it, in 1919, prohibition begins to kick in, and for the entire 1920s, alcohol will be illegal. So it's a country that is somewhat inconsistent. Um, you, you have laws passed against alcohol. You have people wildly flouting those laws, and you know, I'm not sure there ever was a decade that loved drinking more than the 1920s. So that tension is part of the crack-up, and it's really mm -hmm. interesting.